We're not, we're not going to play games. A little bit on the end there now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I told you, I'd like to look after the computer and look for you for me. Okay. Look, yeah, look into the Vodafone plans as well, Bruce. Yeah. Because I know they're really cheap compared to Telstra. And, uh, can be. I, I, was just, I, was just walk, I was just looking for the Telstra um, network because it's so strong out this way. Telstra's strong. It doesn't matter where you go. They're brilliant. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. But here, here, before I couldn't send it, I couldn't pick up. I'd have to walk outside to use the phone. Yeah, because it's so you know,
Who sanctified us by your commandments and caused us to hear the sound of the shofar? Amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Well, we're running a little bit behind time, but that's all right. That's all right. Sorry. We're here, and that is the main thing. Uh, those of you that have joined us online, and I'd like to say a special uh, shout out to Mark's parents to have you guys on. I uh, hope you enjoy the service today. Uh, Mark's on camera, so if I step out of frame, it's all your son's fault. Okay. <laughs> uh, welcome to Richard and Ree. Uh, welcome to Peter and Wendy. Uh, welcome uh, to anyone else that we've, we've got listening to the broadcast. It's really good to have you on. I hope you really enjoy the day. And that uh, you will uh, be uh, better for the experience. So, did everybody have a good week? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. No, oh, that's good. That's very good. All right. Let's uh, open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Shabbat. We thank you that you have given us a time not to do but to be. You've given us a time where we don't think about the past, where we don't think about the future, but we think about the now. And we live in a sanctuary of time, which is a foretaste to that time to come, where we will enter into that eternal Shabbat, that eternal rest from all this strife that we are contending with in this world. We pray, Heavenly Father, 
not only for those that are here with us, but those that have joined us in the broadcast, that your Ruach HaKodesh will be a comfort to everybody. We pray, Father, for healing. We pray, Father, for restoration. We pray for reconciliation. We pray for restoration. And we pray for the coming together of the two houses of Israel. And we pray that you continue to use this congregation mightily to bring about your coming plan of salvation for all mankind. And we pray these things sincerely in the precious name of the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. 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 Welcome. Amen. Shalom. 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 That other guy. <laughs> How are you, John? And listen, Nance, Nancy, if you're on, they have been coming every week. They've been bringing food. They've just been wonderful. I don't know what's happened with them this year, but um, these these kids are really, really helping out. So. Oh, adults. Fair enough. Young, young adults. I don't know. All right. <laughs> let's stand and let's, let's praise Heavenly Father. We're going to go straight into a quick one. Uh, today. All right, we're ready to go. You've got some presents before you can't open them yet. Except for my lovely wife. All right, we're on. They've got the sound on. Sounds on the broadcast. Full People on. can hear us. Full on. All right. Make some noise.
Shalom, give us peace, Father, today. Please allow our spirits to settle on your Shabbat. Please allow us, Father, to feel that double measure of your presence today. In Yeshua's holy name, amen. 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 Yeshua is our focus. Yeshua is our subject. So we'll just sit down. My 
knows that you long for him, you long for companionship with him. He is there with you when there is no one else around. He wraps his arms around you, he comforts you, he ministers to you, he loves you. He will never fail you, he will never leave you, he will never disappoint you. And if you put all your love and your trust on him and you make him your bedrock, whatever else happens in your life, you will prevail. You will survive. You will do more than survive. You will come out a king and a king of kings, a conqueror of conquerors. In his holy name, he will elevate you as princes and princesses. Please be seated, everyone. All right. Uh, we have David up. He's taking us through our liturgy. Uh, we are going to mic him up because uh, David likes to wander around a little bit. And to keep him mic'd up for the people on the broadcast, we have technology. Ooh, it's a wondrous thing. And um, yes, you may do whatever you need to do. Is that where it goes? Okay, I'll leave it with you and I'll turn this mic off. Well, can you can you play with this for you? I'm just waiting for him to come over. Sorry, bro. Yeah, we need your mic. Please open up your sedoors, page one. All right, today, while we, while we wait for David to come up, today I'll be looking at our sixth and final part in our Mistaken Identity Crisis series. This is... Um, we're going to finish with a bang today, I promise you that. Uh, there's going to be a lot of the challenges. There's going to be a lot of things that um, you haven't heard about, perhaps haven't heard about before. I'm going to cut it straight because I, did, I, I think you deserve to hear things without... Uh, unlaced with sugar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I want, to, um, I want to really cut it straight for people today and hopefully we can finish... And, and the series, uh, I've emailed it to everybody. If you're missing any uh, episodes of the series, you are? You don't like sugar? Thanks, John. <laughs> um, and so we can send them out to you, but that'll make six uh, parts. Uh, and today we're going to be focusing on how, we, how we're to perceive the Jews. What really... What really, how really are we meant to, what light are we meant to look at them in? Uh, and uh, in the course of doing that, hopefully it'll uh, allow us to uh, to get more of an idea of where we stand in the bigger picture. How you going there, guys? Highly professional. One day we'll have technical stuff. The technical stuff will get this fixed. No, I can't touch that. I can't touch that. Yeah, try the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
Salvation with fear and trembling. Kirat Yaure Yahweh Rashikokma. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, the wisdom that gets us through to our salvation. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Praise Yahweh, my Neshama, my soul. Yahweh, my Elohim. You are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Yahweh wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out Hashamayim, the heavens like a tent. Mm -hmm. Amen. Please rise for this text. Blessed are you, Yahweh, your Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us concerning the doctrine of his seed. Throughout the generations you are to come, throughout the generations to come. You are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a cord of tequila on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at, so that you will remember all the mitzvot of Yahweh, that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by chasing after the lust of your hearts and your eyes. Then you will remember to obey all of my mitzvot and will be consecrated to your Elohim. All together. Blessed are you, Yahweh, your Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and command us to wrap ourselves in CT. Amen. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of Yahweh. I will exalt you, Yahweh, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Yahweh, my Elohim, I call to you for help and you healed. You, Yahweh, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the abyss. Sing the praises of Yahweh, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last for only the night, but Simcha, comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Yahweh, when you favoured me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Yahweh, I called. To Adonai, I cried. For Rachamim, your mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, I said, if I go down to the abyss, will the dust praise you? 
want to proclaim your faithfulness. Shema Yahweh. And be merciful to me. Yahweh, help me. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Yahweh, my Elohim, I will praise you forever. Amen. Yahweh Elohai, le'olam odecha, matebu.
Ayahafta et Yahweh, Eloheka Bakol, Lubavika Ukol, Namsheka Ukol, Miodeka, Mahayu Hatidarim Haale, Asher Ranopi Metsubeka, Hayom al Lubavika, Vishinantam Lebaneka Vetibata Bam, Vishifteka, Vemechteka, Ublechteka, Vedorek Ukshakbeka Ukameka, Ukshatama Liotel Deka, Mahayula Totopot Paneneka, Uktama Mazuza Peteka, Ubishareka, Bayahafta, Loreka Kimota, and Yadonai, the Shem Yeshua Hamashia, Saha Shalom. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength. These words that I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign in your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall fix them as a mezuzah on the doorpost of your house and on your gates, and all together. You shall love, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Adonai. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Please be seated. Baruchatah Yahweh. Elohenu melech ha'olam, asher nantan lano et dorek ha'yeshua ha'mashiach yeshua. Amen. All together. Blessed be Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us way of salvation in the Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Speedily cause the branch of David thy servant to sprout. Let his Horn be exalted by thy salvation. Avinu Mahenu, daily do we wait for thy salvation. Yeah. All together. Uh, I, I believe with perfect faith in the coming of the Messiah. Messiah. Yeah, yeah, how long it takes. Uh, I will wait his coming every single day. Amen. And his coming is so soon. It will be in our lifetime. Amen. 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 Baku et Yahweh Hamura Baru Yahweh Hamura Leolam Bahe Bless Yahweh who is to be praised. Bless me Yahweh who is praised for all eternity. The Shomet Shabbat Shalom. All together. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter, nor your male servant nor your female servant, nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day. Therefore, B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, shall keep the Shabbat and observe the Shabbat throughout their generations as an everlasting perpetual covenant. This will be a sign between me and you for generations to come, Amen. that you may know that I am Yahweh, Ani Yahweh, that makes you Kadosh holy. Amen. Amen. O oh, Yahweh, among the Elohim, who is like you? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bestow your favor upon Zion. Rebuild the walls of Yerushalayim. For in you alone do we trust. Elohim and ruler, high and exalted, Adon of all this world. Top of page eight. By Ben When the ark would travel, Moshe would say, Kuma Yahweh, arise Yahweh, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For from Zion will go forth Hadavat Yahweh and the Torah from Yerushalayim. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. And we are his people, Israel. Would everyone please stand for the raising of the dead? <coughs>
Yahweh, you are Kadosh, and your name is Kadosh, and the Kadosh and praise your name every single day forever. Blessed are you, the Holy One of Israel. So from Zion we'll go forth the Torah and Hadavah Adonai, the word of Adonai from Yerushalayim. Blessed is he who gave the Torah to his people, Israel, in his home. Please be seated. After last week's Shabbat uh, service, we're moving on to the uh, back into the regular cycle. So we're going to um, open up to our new reading here, which is continuing on from the previous cycle before Shabbat. Uh, we made a mistake with um, the uh, reading during the week. Uh, I'm just uh, calculating the the, um, the Torah Pasha. So this is actually Baikara chapter 6, not Baikara chapter 5. 
So if everybody would like to open up the Bible to chapter 6. Thank you, Dave. Okay, if everyone's open to Vayikra chapter 6, Yahamud Tom Be'Torah, read this week's Torah Pasha. Vayikra chapter 6, thank you. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Bless Yahweh who is blessed. Bless Yahweh. Blessed is Yahweh who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who chose us from among all the peoples and gave us his glory. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the Torah. Amen. Reading coming from Vayikra 6, from verses 1 to 11. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, When any being sins and committed a trespass against Yahweh and has lied to his neighbor about a deposit or about a pledge, or about a robbery, or shall extort from his neighbor, or has found what was lost and has lied concerning it, or did swear falsely, so that he sins in regard to any one of all these that a man does. Then it shall be, when he sins and shall be guilty, that he shall return what he took by robbery, or what he extorted, or the deposit which was deposited with him, or the lost items, items which he found, or all that about which he swore falsely, he shall repay its total value, add one fifth more to it, and give it to whom it belongs on the day of his guilt offering. Then he brings his guilt offering to Yahweh, a ram, a perfect one, from the flock, with your valuation as a guilt offering to the priest. And the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh, and he shall be given, forgiven for whatever he did that made him guilty. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, command Aharon and his sons, saying, This is the Torah of the burnt offering. This is the burnt offering, because it is burned on the altar all night until morning, and the fire of the altar is kept burning on it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment and put his linen trousers on his body and shall take up the ashes of the burnt offering which the fire has consumed on the altar and shall put them beside the altar and he shall take off his garments and put on other garments and shall bring the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and implanted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the Torah. Amen. Okay. So we can see there a slight difference in the reading. Okay, many of us have a Jewish art scroll Pumash or an art scroll Bible or a traditional Bible. So we notice then that there was a slight difference in what is Vayikra chapter 6 
according to the Jewish tradition, and what Tom has read in Galatians chapter 6 according to um, his Bible, which is the Besorah of Yeshua. Okay? So it's not as if Tom hasn't read the wrong section, he's just read Galatians chapter 6 from his Bible. Okay? Which is throwing the saddle. But it's also solved a riddle, so thank you. <laughs> okay. So. What Boyekov chapter 6 is that in Tom's Bible is actually referring to is what we've got in Boyekov chapter 5 in, um, in the other Bibles, okay? So, if we go, if we go forward in, Tom, in Tom's Bible and we get on to, um, I'm not sure exactly what verse in Tom's Bible it corresponds with the Jewish calculations, but if we go onto the the correct or the um, the Jewish way of understanding it. We can see here that the, the Kohen Hagadol is making offerings, guilt offerings for sin, etc. The something to note here when he's cleaning the the ashes from the altar, okay, is that he has to change his clothes. Okay? Why does he have to change his clothes? I mean, at a practical level, Rashi explains that it's he's going to get him dirty. It's a messy job dealing with the ashes on an altar. Okay, but at a more spiritual level, he, cha he changes his clothes because he's now becoming a servant. He's now doing the servant role, and in the culture of that day, the servant was not allowed to dress like the master, okay? So the, the priestly garments that the Kohen is wearing when he makes the offering cannot be used when he goes to clean the altar or to take the ashes off the altar. This is servant-master relationship, okay? So those priestly garments, those Kohen Hagadol garments are reserved for a specific purpose and that specific purpose has to remain set apart, kadosh, holy, for that purpose. Okay? So, how do we, what's a practical application of this? How often do we dress up in our finest clothes for Shabbat? Because we're in the presence of our king. Okay? We are putting on our good clothes, our best clothes, to be in the presence of the king. When the Kohen Hagadol will dress for the offering, he's in the best garments, the best clothes, to be in the presence of the king. But when he has to resort to serving, he will change his clothes. So when we do our work for six days a week, and we're serving our masters, our employers, our bosses, we're in different clothes. Okay, so we can see the application and the principle behind it. Okay, we'll now move on to our next reading, which is uh, Yerod Yahu. Uh, in the half Torah, come forward to you if you consider the prophets, Brother Mark, to read the half Torah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Opening of Taf Torah. Bless, blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who chose good prophets and was pleased with their words which were spoken in truth. Blessed are you, Yahweh, who chooses the Torah and Moshe his servant and Israel his people, and the pro and the prophets of truth and righteousness. Amen. Amen. Yirmiyahu, uh, seven, verse twenty-one. Thus says Yahweh, Master of Legions, Elohim of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your peace offerings and their meat. For I did not speak with your forefathers, nor did I command them. On the, on the day I took them out of the land of Mitzrayim concerning burnt, burnt or peace offerings. Rather, it was only this thing that I commanded them, saying, Hearken to my voice. 
that I will be your Elohim and you will be my people. And you will go on go on the entire entire way that I command you, so that it will be well for you. But they did not listen, and they did not incline their ear, but followed their own counsel and their and the visions of their evil heart. They went backward and not forward. For the for the day your forefathers left the land of Mitraim until this day I sent to you all my servants, the prophets, daily, rising early and sending forth. But they would not listen to me, and they would not incline their ear. They stiffened their neck and the, and became worse than their forefathers. You will tell them on tell them all these things, but they will not listen to you. You will call out to them, but they will not answer you. Say unto them, This is the nation that would not listen to the voice of Yahweh its Elohim, and they would not re accept rebuke. Faith is lost. It is detached from their speech. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us his... Oh, sorry. Uh, half Torah closing, sorry. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, rock of all the worlds, righteous in all generations, the Almighty, the faithful one, who, who says and does, who speaks and fulfills, for all his words are true and right. For the Torah, for the divine service, for the prophets, and for this Sabbath day, which you gave us, Yahweh, our Elohim, for holiness and for rest, for honor and for glory. For all this, Yahweh our Elohim, we thank you and bless you. Blessed be your name by the mouth of all the living continually forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Elohim, sanctifier of the Sabbath. Amen. Okay, so just very briefly, you can see harsh rebuke coming from the Nazi, the prophet there, can't we? Mm. Harsh rebuke, say, trying to get them to return. Everything happens gently, gently, and then harsher and harsher and harsher, until finally judgment. Okay, so we know judgment is coming. This is why this is our chance for Teshuvah, for repentance, to come closer and be closer to him. Okay. So we're now going to move on to our Netzarim Ketuvim reading. Our, please open up to 1 Peter. Okay, come forward, faithful disciple, King Messiah Yeshua, Brother Mark. Read. Sorry, it's Brother Michael to read. <laughs> well, it's Brother Mark that just read. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. And our reading today is uh, out of Petra, 1 Peter 2, from 21 to 25. Opening the Nazarene inscriptions. Blessed are you, Yahweh Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us his only begotten Son as our Redeemer, and who has given a new covenant to the house of Judea and the house of Israel, unifying the two into one new kingdom, the Commonwealth of Israel. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh who chose the original 12 apostles to bring this message of renewal to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and has chosen us to carry on that work to sift Israel from the nations. Amos 9, verse 9, where you scattered them. May this reading stir the heart of your people. Amen. 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 First Peter, chapter 2, 21 to 25. For to this you were called, because Messiah also suffered for us, mm -hmm. leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Who, being reviled, did not revile in return. Suffering did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his body on the timber, so that we, having died, having died to sins, might live unto righteousness, by whose strips, 
stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd, our overseer of our lives. Amen. 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 Blessed are you, Yahweh Elohim, King of the Universe, for ratifying the new covenant that gives to your people a law of return by the sacrificial blood of your son, Demas Messiah Yeshua. We thank you for giving us the full messianic message of the kingdom. We proclaim to all the world the kingdom is at hand. For all this, Yahweh our Elohim, we thank you and we bless you. Blessed are you, Yahweh, who has renewed covenant with your people, Israel. Michael. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our Tehillim reading. This Tehillim is concentrating on the coming Messianic era. So it's all about the, the Messianic era, the great Shabbat, like a dull Shabbat, as they say. Jordano is going to read some of it in the Hebrew. Do not worry if you can't understand it. Go with the spirit of it, because that's what we're here for. We're here in spirit with the Ruach HaKadosh. Jordano, come forward you, Brother Jordano, to bring Israel Shiru HaAmet, the song of truth. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Blessed are you, Yahweh Elohim, King of the Universe, who selected people of praise, that's you, and was pleased with their worship in spirit and truth. You raised up David, your faithful servant and righteous anointed, the sons of Korah who brought honor to their house and righteous worshipers in every generation to sing songs of delight in your presence and you inhabit their praise. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Amen. 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 Tehillim 67, Psalm 67. Let <laughs> For the conductor upon Nikonos, a psalm, a song. May Elohim favor us and bless us. May he's, he's, he, may he illuminate his countenance with us. Say love to make known your way on earth among all the nations, your salvation. Then peoples will acknowledge you, O Elohim. The people, the peoples will acknowledge you, all of them. Nations will be glad and sing for joy because you will judge the peoples fairly and guide with fairness the nations on earth. Selah. Yeah. Then peoples will acknowledge you, O Elohim. The peoples will acknowledge you, all of them. The earth will have yielded its produce. May Elohim. Our own Elohim, bless us. May Elohim bless us. May all the ends of the earth fear him. Amen. May it be your will. Yahweh Elohim, 
and the Elohim of our ancestors, that you paid heed and mercy to the psalm that I have recited, and may it stand in love, fellowship, and companionship, and all together for Yahweh. For, for we, we love you, you and you alone. alone. Amen. Okay, so now we'll move on to our Mishibara. If anybody has any names for anybody that needs healing, please mention those names. Mishibara Kavoteno, the Imanato, Abraham, Gitzak, the Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rocco, Belia, who Yabarek et Kaholim. The names are Jordano Terry. Miriam. Eloisa Tria. Genesis. Matsumoto. Matsumoto. Shabnam Jordan. Aroha Yait Smith. Aroha Yait Smith. Carmel Bateman. Robert Pieri. Carmel Bateman. Carmel Bateman. Kevin McDonald. Kevin McDonald. Any other names? Joseph Tawil. Joseph Toel. Okay. Sandy Bruce. Chaim Benario. Katarina Baron. Alan and Helen Morris. Hakadosh Baruku, Yimele Rakamena Lahem, Le Hakalim Ul Rakotam, Ul Hakazikam, Vi Yishlach Lahem Mehera, Rafua, Rafua Shilema. Min Hashem Mayim, Rafuat and the Fesh of Fuat of Kuf, Mi Elohim Ba Adalau, his Makaro Benoma, Amen. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rokol, and Leah, bless and heal those who are ill, and we've mentioned their names. May the Blessed One be filled with compassion for their heart to be restored and their strength to be revived. May Elohim send them a complete renewal of body and spirit. And let us all say Amen. 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 Would everyone please stand for the raising of the floor. <coughs> this is the Torah that Moshe placed before the children of Israel. Behold, the good doctrine has been given to you. My Torah, do not forsake it altogether. All that Yahweh has said, we will do and hear. And that hearing is just as the same hearing of the Shema. When we hear, meaning we understand. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and those who support it are blessed. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths, shalom. Help us to return to you, to Shuvah, Shuvah Yisrael, to return Israel. Yahweh, when truly we shall return, renew our days as in the ancient past. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Yahweh, my strength and redeemer. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves in your word.
Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. We'll now take a short break and we'll be back sh shortly where Brother JJ is going to be giving us a very interesting teaching on the Messiah. Whoa. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Okay. Shabbat shalom. And we will be back in a 15 minute break. <laughs> Just call me a case of mistake in that day. I don't come over. Discuss it over the coffee. Guess you have to live on the Thank you. 
Maradona. Ay, ay, ay. Yo voy a Let the U.S. Yahweh's Elohim to you the best. He's doing you good prophets and the fleet of the Lord. Sounds very clear, actually. Yeah. It's a bit more Viking, I like it. Yes, sir. I like it. Thank you. Hello, hello. Testing, testing. Let the U.S. Yahweh's Elohim to you the best. He's doing good prophets and the fleet of their words. He's spoken his truth. Let the U.S. Yahweh's Seizing the time, my friend, and servants, and the youth are around these people. Oh, this is the top, I like the guy that's the top down there. Prophets of truth and righteousness. What is that, Brian? <laughs> that light is probably more than enough for Brian. What is that, Brian? Blessed are you, Yahweh. Elohim, the universe, is doing us good prophets. Uh, they sound very similar, but it just depends on, I think, the floor. You can flip them over. You can have them playing. They just buy out. Bless the new Good, yeah, good. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Nice thing. Blessed are you, Yahweh, Elohim, to you the best. He's doing you good prophets and the fleet of their words which have spoken his truth. Thanks. Do you think the other one sounds cool? This one sounds cool? B. Oh, maybe this one. Long or bread, long or bread. That's one is high. I can speak louder. Yeah, but no, it's just that normal tone like that. I don't really. That's good. It's kind of. I don't know. Like you know, where like your ears. Yeah, I can hear it's not clear. What are you just saying? Where is Jason? Jason. You are requested in the foyer. Jason, we you are requested in the shul. Jason, back at the um, airport. ASAP. Okay, Jason, when you're when you're ready, I need you. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Mm. 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 Mm.
was like, I was like that far of a piece of shit, and I knew he was gonna kill me. I like the name Christian. Is it short? Is it long for Chris? Can I call you Chris for short? Can I call you Chris to Chris Christopherson? Can I can I call you the the Count of Monte Cristo? It sounds great. Can I call him CJ? What's the J for, Christian? His name's Jason. Joseph. Oh, Joseph. Yes, is that right? Can you write your name? I asked him if he could write it a cappella, but that's okay. Your cats with their nose, and I like your butterfly, and I like your little kitten, and I like the pink flowers. Beautiful. And my beautiful daughter Hannah is here, and she's running away. Somebody grab her quickly. Christian, go and get her, please. Christian, I was only joking. Oh gosh, I'm not sure if I can feel like I've got a growth on my face. I've Is that right, Chris? Yeah. Thanks, Chris. I can hear myself breathing just as well as I can. Is, is, can I, are you taking that to a commercial? Hi, Liam. How are you? I've heard you're being a good boy today. Is that true? I'm not sure if I believe it. I've heard you're being a good boy too, Christian. Is that true? Are you going to get some statue work today, Christian? Or is that the same thing you're going to get today? Yes. Can I come on? Well, they're not here, so you might want to uh, come here with your father. So you sit back and see him. you smile all the time? Why are you smiling all the time? Why, why are you happy all the time? Because I am. Seems to be happy all the time. Too, too much. Bad, not bad. Not bad. Go home and practice. Hey, Dad, you need to buy me a show fire, please. You make sure you tell your dad you need to buy me a show fire, Dad. 
Great week. Uh, I bought a new car this week. Well, uh -huh. Technically, that's not correct. It's not a new car. It's actually nine years old, but it's new for me. Yeah, no, I didn't have Did you have a look at it, John? Did you like it? I'm happy with it. Um, I don't think it, I don't think it's called a four-wheel drive. I think it's called an all-wheel drive. I'm not sure what the difference is. Maybe somebody can tell me later. But uh, Baruch Hashem Yahweh, I have, uh, and yes, it's true, I have a new car. It's Jaden's birthday tomorrow. Jaden, it's his birthday. We've got some presents here in the corner. My, my wonderful wife, she has uh, got some beautiful gifts there. So we're going to get him out the front at some stage to open those presents up. Uh, for those of you that are, and we're going to sing him happy birthday, yes. We aren't going to, we aren't going to do hip hip hooray. Yeah. We'll just do yeah. I'm not going to do hip hip hooray. Uh, uh, have you got gifts for as well? All right. Bring, good. Yep. Bring that out too. Yeah. Get it out. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Brianna can come and sit in it. Yeah. Come on. You can, you can sing it. All right. Now, how we how we doing on the broadcast? We got volume? Get the volume back up. Boy, it's up. Eight, eight viewers. Well, we've got Susanna. Susanna's actually joining us live on the broadcast. Rafu Shalema for Susanna. She's not feeling the best today. Uh, Kaim is on. With Kaim's on. Mm -hmm. Kaim Ben Ariel. Yep. You're kidding. Fantastic. When we when we sung Kaim Lanetzak, I, I thought of him very, very deeply today. So uh, we pray that you're doing well, Kaim, today. And you're having a good Shabbos down there in beautiful Melbourne. I love Melbourne. I want to live in Melbourne. Can somebody get me a house there, please? Uh, it's a bit cold, but I just love it. I love uh, the people there. I love the shops. I love the trees. I love the shopping. I love the smog. Um, love the smog. No, there's no smog there. I love the trams. I love Javin. Javin, come up here, please. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> All right, you ready, David? You're going to sing? Get Brianna. Yeah, they'll be singing. You're just standing there. Just stand there. Just stay there. Yes, you can. Okay. Oh, what? That's huge. Oh. Wow. Well, I did not expect this to Say thank you, Shabnam. Thank you, Shabnam. All right, so we've got a little special. Oh. You're going to come and sing Happy Birthday in Hebrew? Uh, yeah. Just a minute. I need the word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. Yeah, you're just That's standing there. That's all right. That's all right. Just stand there and smile. Yeah. Stand there and smile. I don't have to pick your nose. <laughs> oh, I picked, oh, did he pick his nose? Oh, he picked his nose. I love this guy. This guy, we're training Jad enough. He's going to uh, be elder one day. Bouncing. Yeah, this congregation. He's going to be taking it <laughs> and leading the people here. Dormant. Dormant. <laughs> you want some drink? Can you ask Granny if you can use some drink? Can you ask Granny to get you a drink? Thank you, Shabby. So you can steal Kempsey's drink. There you go. Thank you, Shabby. There you go. Sorry about that, Kempsey. You've lost your drink. Make sure you say sorry to Kempsey, okay? Sorry. He's not around. <laughs> sorry. That's his mum. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have to sing happy birthday soon because the sun's going down. Where's <laughs> Hannah? Not good news there, I'm afraid. Okay. All right. We've got another gift here from John and Donna at Genesis. Anyone, everyone? Or is it just from Genesis? Okay, you no, it's from, it's from you guys. Oh, it's, from, it's from Donna. So you brought it out, so you're getting the credit. So that's good. All right, here we go. 
Big boys. on Mistaken Identity Crisis. I want to thank everybody who's been a part of this series. I believe it's um, it's been a, a series that has had uh, some value and some merit. Um, it's something that we needed to go through and, and discuss and look at. In all honesty, the series could probably go to 12 parts, but we need to move on. There's other subjects we need to explore. Uh, and so I hope today we'll, we'll be going out with a bang with, uh, with what we know. Hopefully not too much of a bang. As most of you know, there is a great divide between Christianity and Judaism. Christianity and Judaism. You can be forgiven for thinking that somewhere across this great divide, of the Christians 
and the Jews, the Netzarim, are floating around somewhere, gravitating sometimes close to Judaism and gravitating sometimes close to Christianity and continually going between the two. It's a fact that most Messianic believers emerge from Christian backgrounds. It's a fact. Put up your hand if you had a church-going Christian Sunday-keeping background. Put up your hand if you had a Christian background. Put up your hand if you had no religious background whatsoever and you came and this is the first religious, uh, organized religion experience you've ever had. No hands. <laughs> As people mature, when they go from being a Christian to being a Messianic, then to the revelation that they're Nazarene, that they're Nazarene Israelites. And they begin to mature into this faith. The question arises in their minds, where does Christianity fit now? Where does Judaism fit? Is Judaism more relevant to me or is it less relevant to me? Is Christianity even more relevant to me than it was before or is it less relevant to me? Is it of no relevance? Is Judaism of no relevance? Is it just all about what I'm doing now? Should there be any attention paid anymore to organized Christianity? Should there be any attention paid to Judaism, to Orthodox Judaism? That is the Judaism that does not accept King Messiah Yeshua. What's the answer? Where does the where does the dividing line of Babylon, mystery Babylon, end and where does kingdom living start? When am I going too close to the sun, that fiery sun of Judaism that I'm going to burn up? Where is the safe measure of distance? Do I even care about distance? Should I even be concerned about that? Do I view Christianity as its practitioners, if they stay in Christendom, do I view them as being doomed? Do I view a Jew who stays in an Orthodox Jewish environment as being doomed? That's pretty harsh. You've heard the, the comment, well, all religions really preach about the same God. Well, if that's true, that same God is telling a whole bunch of people a whole bunch of different things. Mommy. Now, what does Judaism teach? Have you ever stopped to think about that? What does Judaism actually teach? In a nutshell. We don't want a whole lecture on it. What does Christianity actually teach? In a nutshell, we don't want a whole lecture on it. Give it to me on the fly. But give it to me good. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't doom and gloom it. Just tell me what what do they teach? What does Judaism teach? What does Christianity teach? Well, let's look at Judaism. Judaism teaches that its followers are the chosen people. It teaches that its followers are the chosen people of Yahweh. What they call Hashem or Adonai. What's going on there? Judaism teaches that its people are a nation of priests. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Judaism teaches to obey Torah. And what is Torah? For sure. Is it the law? No, it's not the law. Torah is Yah's instruction. It's a window into his wisdom. It is not the law. It is Yah's instruction. It is his, his counsel. And Judaism teaches that everybody's working to a coming age of redemption. Well, so I don't know about you, but so far I've got a problem with any of that. Hmm. I just don't. Judaism works towards a time when a Mashiach, where we get the word Messiah, will come and herald a new era for mankind. 
I don't care what somebody might have told you about Judaism that they, they don't believe in a Messiah. If if anybody's toting to you with Judaism that doesn't believe in a Messiah, then it's not Judaism. Uh, and I have heard people say that that Judaism is a religion that doesn't believe in a Messiah. That's, that's, that's wrong. Absolutely wrong. But like Christianity, Judaism has its fair of problems with crazy sex. S-E-C-T-S. Just sort of clarify that. Sex. Sex. <laughs> Each Jew is taught that he is part of a whole. Each Jew is taught that he is part of a whole. He's part of a bigger picture. And this whole makes up a body of people who will be reconciled into a complete at one where we get the word atonement with the creator of the universe. As such, every individual act Every individual act, whether it be an act that's good or bad, has an impact not only on you as an individual who did the act, but to the body at large. So whatever you do that's good, let's say you give somebody a gift. Let's say you help somebody out financially. Let's say... You don't somebody blood and it saves their life. This is said to hasten Messiah. Let's say you do something naughty. You do something bad. This also hastens Messiah. This also hastens Messiah. But whether you do something good or bad will determine the manner in which Mashiach returns. It's said that if all mankind, ready for this? Actually, it's not even all mankind, just those who are keeping the Torah, whether they be Netzerim or Jews. If everyone of those kept Shabbat properly, Mashiach would come straight away. So if we all did the right thing, we bring Mashiach, and he'd come in peace. But if the world persists to go to hell in a handbasket, what is Yeshua going to come in? He's going to come arrayed for battle, isn't he? He's going to come arrayed for war. So everything that you do, no matter how small it is, tip, can tip the scale for good or bad. Who's been overchanged? You've gone to a, a you've gone to a department store and they've given you twenty dollars more change than you should have got. And and in times past, you might have gone, woohoo, I'm up. Or you've gone, oh, excuse me, you've given me an extra $20 more. That's sorry. You've, oh, thank you for being honest. No, not a problem. So it doesn't matter how small it is. We have to be honest, even when there's nobody watching. Because Yah is always watching. There is always a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, isn't there? You are surrounded by such a great array of witnesses, it says in the book of Hebrews. So that's what Judaism teaches, in a nutshell. <clears throat> Historically, Judaism has rejected Christianity. Why has Judaism rejected Christianity? It has rejected Christianity based on the premise that it follows a reformer who set about establishing a new religion. A dissident rabbi who rejected the old religion and the people who observed it. <clears throat> now I'm mean, now you're starting to lose me. I'm not familiar with that. I mean I was familiar with that, but I'm not familiar with that being the truth. Christianity. What does Christianity teach on the fly? It teaches that belief in a miraculous event roughly 2,000 years ago, accompanied by a commitment to live in like manner with the focal point of that event, Jesus Christ, receives individual salvation by being eventually elevated to a place called heaven, putting that individual in close proximity 
with the creator of the universe. A blissful state. Christianity's chief text. Now, what's Christianity's chief, chief text of what it believes? Well, its chief text is the New Testament. Now, inside the New Testament, it goes deeper and it has the Gospels. That's their chief text. Allegedly. That's it. That's their... That's their you've got the Catechism here, you've got the New Testament here. The New Testament is perceived as a series of books that merely map out. Oh, sorry, the Old Testament, from a Christian perspective, is perceived as a series of books that map out and show the formation or the lead up to the true, true religion founded in Jesus Christ. Yes, you will go to some churches, and they do. They spend a lot of time in the Old Testament. I'm not going to lie to you. And they will obey things in the Old Testament. But really, where the rubber hits the road, it is from the book of Matthew onward. And they go back and they look at the Tanakh standing in the Nazarene writings. Instead of looking with their feet firmly grounded in the first five books of Moses and looking at the rest of the writings of the Tanakh. Don't even, we're not even going to talk about the Nazarene writings yet. That's where your feet are going to be. Because if your feet are in that location over there, you're going to run into some problems. You're going to run into some contradictions. It's like telling a story backwards. It's kind of like telling a story backwards. Many people believe that the so-called New Testament portrays Jews as being fundamentally evil. Many people today believe that the New Testament is the source book of the source core book of the seed of Jewish hatred of why people should despise the Jews. That's the that's their blueprint of anti-Semitism. The New Testament. Is it true? Let's have a look. Christianity's foundational belief about Jews and Judaism. Here we go. Hold on to your zig zig. Number one, the Jews are culpable for crucifying Jesus. Now you're gonna to have to forgive me because I'm gonna be saying Jesus Christ throughout this lecture, and I'm gonna be saying God throughout the lecture. But that's mainly through quotations. The Jews are culpable for crucifying Jesus. As such, they are guilty of a thing called deicide, where a deity is killed by people. Two, the tribulations of the Jewish people throughout history constitute God's punishment of them killing Jesus. Number three, Jesus originally came to preach only to Jews. But when they rejected him, he abandoned them for the Gentiles instead. Number three. The children of Israel were God's original chosen people by virtue of an ancient covenant. But by rejecting Jesus, they forfeited their chosenness. And now, by virtue of a new covenant or testament, Christians have replaced the Jews as God's chosen people, the church having become the people of God. Have you heard the expression... We're spiritual Israel. I have a problem with that with that phrase. We're spiritual Israel. Why don't you just say you're Israel? It's kind of like somebody that says, I can't turn up to your house to the party, but I'll be there in spirit. They ain't going to be there. I'll be there in spirit. Just say you're Israel. There's no way they're going to say they're Israel. Because you know what? If you say you're Israel, all of a sudden, you come under not only the blessings, but the curses as well. We always want just the good and none of the bad, don't we? And none of us stop long enough to think that a curse is actually a blessing in disguise. We want to be a part of a people who just get the blessings and not the curses. 
We want to be a people. Well, if that's the case, we've got to be a people that doesn't do anything wrong. Sometimes Yah needs to kind of knock you back into the ring. Number five, the Jewish Bible or the so-called Old Testament repeatedly portrays the opaqueness and stubbornness of the Jewish people and their disloyalty to God. The Jewish Bible contains many predictions of the coming of Jesus as Messiah or Christ, yet the Jews are blind to the meaning of their own Bible. Number seven, by the time of Jesus' ministry, of Jesus ministry Judaism had ceased to be a living faith. Judaism had ceased to be a living faith. Number eight, Judaism's essence is a restrictive and, and it's burdensome, burdensome legalism. Judaism is restrictive and it's burdensome legalism. Number nine, Christianity emphasizes excessive love, while Judaism maintains a balance of justice, wrath of God, and a love of peace. And the final one, Judaism's oppressiveness reflects the disposition of Jesus' opponents called Pharisees, predecessors of the rabbis, who in their teaching and behavior were hypocrites, see woes of the Pharisees, and you'll find that in the book of Matthew. Right. Matthew 5, somebody said. Good on you. Okay. In most churches today, none of the ten fund foundational beliefs which we just read about the Jew or Judaism are openly taught. Let's just get that straight. None of what I just shared with you is openly taught most places today. You might find some places in Vatican City, in some Jesuit lecture halls, but openly you won't find it. In fact, over a period of time, the church have put out official statements quite to the contrary of their former stance on Jews. In the decree of uh, Nestra Atate, Pope Paul VI in council declared the following. You ready? The church believes that by his cross, Christ, our peace, reconciled Jews and Gentiles, making both one in himself. God holds the Jew most dear for the sake of their fathers. He does, uh, he does not repent of the gifts he makes or of the calls he issues. Very biblical, that. Mm. The death of Christ cannot be charged against all Jews without distinction, then alive, nor against the Jews of today. The Jews should not be presented as rejected or accursed by God as if this followed from the Holy Scriptures. Now, this is a... A declaration from the Vatican. It's different, isn't it? The church decrees, uh, decries hatred, persecutions, displays of anti-Semitism directed against Jews at any time and by anyone. Well, it's not my place to judge the sincerity of what we just read there. I will say one thing. It's worth noting that after the Holocaust... Anti-Semitism wasn't a very good thing to display. It wasn't very popular. This nation of people who had no army of their own, had no nation of their own, had the absolute stuffing kicked out of them by a regime of six million men, women and children kind of wasn't cool to hate the Jew anymore. It wasn't. So had they maintained their former foundational beliefs about the Jew, the church would probably have got a bit of a beating. So what I'm saying is, they're hedging their bets. But I like it. I like it. And who am I to judge the sincerity of it? And it's worth noting that these statements developed from 1932 to 1964, or 1967. So those of you that know when the Holocaust took place, some of these beliefs were already gestating with some people in Catholicism. To close out our series on mistaken identity crisis, we will examine why. The New Testament is believed to be anti-Semitic and debunk these claims as we go. Believe it or not, the accounts of Messiah in what is commonly called the Gospels and the subsequent Nazarene writings, commonly called the New Testament, 
have been recast as uniquely anti-Jewish stories. And why I'm showing you this today on our last episode of the series is because I'm going to the seat of why everybody's having so many issues today with grasping who they are and coming out of where they were and going to where they should be. This was a deliberate move and be cleverly focused by cleverly focusing on Yeshua's accusers' ethnicity and their authority as chief practitioners of the true faith at the time of Yeshua's arrival, the entire race becomes tarred by the same brush. The absence of the other ten tribes make things very simplistic, as all you have to do is put the Jew on the chopping block. No other race of people are a threat to Yeshua's clemency to the role of Mashiach. I'll say that again. No other nation on the earth is a threat to Yeshua's clemency to the throne of David. Only a threat to the Jews if they're corrupt. If you're not corrupt, he's a welcome guy coming in. The heathen couldn't care less who you thought was the Messiah or not. Only when the role is transposed into a political arena where you then say he's a claimant to the throne of David, does Rome even give it a notice? Because then there could be a revolt on our hands because then we wouldn't be allowed to oppress this nation anymore and occupy it because they're going to put a king back on the throne. So now it's a political problem. Now the nations are concerned. They don't care if a guy wanders around healing people and saving people and making people being born again or nursing them. What do they care? Come with me now. As we go into the scriptures from the point of view that has ghosted almost every single Christian believer since the church's inception. In the subconscious mind of every born and bred Christian is a scripture that defames, dishonors, and dethrones the Jew. Not sure if you follow? What do you think of when I say the word Pharisee? What's the first thing that pops in your head when I say the word Pharisee? Giordano. Giordano? That's me too. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first thing. It's almost like when you say Satan. What's the first thing? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a pitchfork and I've got a tail with a big pointy arrow on the end. And I'm in my black, yeah, I'm in my, my red tights and, yes, my apparel. What do you think of when you hear somebody say Pharisee, is it a positive thing? Is it a negative thing? Is it a positive thing? And you put a negative thing and you quickly put a positive thing in there. So you don't want to be like everyone else. Oh my. Is this alright? Okay. It is. Did the word hypocrite pop in there anywhere? Yeah, of course it did. Of course it did. You hypocrite. Did you just quickly, when I said the word Pharisee, apart from seeing Giordano there, did you see? A, a black tully clad man scowling through a beard with other black tully clad men scowling as Yeshua walks past. Yep. <laughs> but, but. With them all wearing ph phylacteries on their head, prayer phylacteries the size of car headlights. Yeah. Worship scowling. Maybe you saw them looking disapprovingly at Messiah as he's walking past minding his own business. If so, you're still carrying around the default mechanism placed in you as a child or as a young adult that the blind Pharisees is the blueprint of every Jew. Have you ever tried Googling, doing an image search of the, of the word Pharisee on Google? It's not real good, is it? It's Jordana. <laughs> Last night I decided to, to Google image search the word Pharisee and look what I got. I don't think there's one positive image in there. And they're all sort of doing this, aren't they? Yeah. 
This is why every time a new passion film comes out and is given wide theatrical release, the Jew goes, oh my goodness. Hold they on. literally hold on. Yeah. They go, how dark is the temple going to look? Have you ever noticed that in these, not all of them, but in, in some of these Christian videos, wherever they're in the temple, the temple always looks like a dark, cold place, not very inviting at all. And whenever you see Sadducees, or you see Pharisees wandering around, they don't look nice. And so when we see the passion, Mel Gibson's passion film, we see these stereotypes just coming through. And the Jew sits there again going, oh, jeez, this isn't good. <clears throat> what hope has a nation got if another nation believes you killed their God? You're a nation of people that killed their God. What hope have they got? Not much. Now, when you think of a Pharisee, the Hebrew word is peroshim. Do you think of these guys? You probably don't even know who those are. People are like, yeah, just, oh, uh, yeah. Gamaliel. Gamaliel was one of the most respected sages in Yeshua's day. He was very, very, very well respected. Very knowledgeable and had a large school, had a lot of students underneath him. What is he found saying here? Leave these men alone. Let them go. Which men? Us. You. Nazarenes, let them go. And then he goes on to say, if these men are doing a will that is their own will and it's not of you, it will come to nothing. But, he says to his peers, if they are doing the will of Elohim and we stand in their way, we will be found as going against the one that we all worship and that we serve. Very wise words. Now, who was this guy? He was a Pharisee. Does anybody remember Nicodemus? Nicodemus? Rav, Rav Nicodemus. Nicodemus. He come to Yeshua at night. And what does he say to Yeshua? Rabbi, I know that you are a teacher who has come from Elohim. I know that you are a teacher that has come from Elohim. And he proceeded to sit down with Messiah and allow Messiah to teach him. He was on par with this guy here. These guys weren't nobodies. These guys that were up there in the Sanhedrin. These were, these were big. Big enough to humble themselves Joseph of Arimathea. He was a rich man and he waited for the coming kingdom of Elohim. He was a rich man and he waited for the coming kingdom of Elohim. What did Joseph of Arimathea do? He boldly went up and asked for Yeshua's body. And with Nicodemus, they prepared his body hastily because Shabbat was coming. And he gave him his own tomb. So two Pharisees were Yeshua's chief undertakers. Legend says that some of these Pharisees abdicated their positions after Yeshua was crucified. They stood down. So let's look at the term Pharisee. 
let's look at the term Pharisee. The Pharisees were the holiness sect of the Jews. The holiness sect, the set apart ones of the Jews. Those entrusted to teach, to guide, and direct the people. They were meant to be the shepherds. They had authority over the priests. Now, you know what? There's some people that don't like to hear that. But I'll ask you, out of Aaron and Moshe, who had the authority? Moshe, who was the high priest? Aaron. Aaron. It's from the word perisha, the singular of paresha, denotes one who separates himself or keeps away from persons or things impure in order to attain the degree of holiness and righteousness required in those who would commune with Elohim or God. They were meant to be the shepherds. They were meant to be the watchmen. But something went wrong. Isaiah 56, 10 and 11 says, Israel's watchmen are blind. They lack all knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They cannot bark. They lie around and dream. They love to sleep. They are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding, and they all turn to their own way. They seek their own gain. They seek their own gain. This is why Yeshua had to minister before he offered himself up to set right the false teaching that had crept into Pharisaic observance, chiefly influenced by the Sadducees, men who were also originally of noble descent. But by corruption of office, by mixing unauthorized occupants into the authoritative arm of the temple system. Bad influence had swept in the midst of the builders of the Torah. They were on a one-way collision course for hell. Even still many Sadducees, albeit of less influence, became loyal to Messiah as the word attests. Turn to your Bibles in Acts 6 and 7. I'm going to show you something that you've probably never noticed before. As you're turning to your scriptures in Acts 6 and 7, Sadducees, sorry, chapter 6, verse 7, chapter 6, verse 7, the Sadducees, they were in charge of the temple. And so they were also the temple priests. And so what is Acts 6 and 7? Does somebody want to read it out to us? And the word of Elohim spread, and the number of the taught ones increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests who were obedient to the belief. What did that just say? A great many of the priests became obedient to the Netzarim way. That's what that's what that verse is saying. So not all the Sadducees were bad. In fact. There were priests among them that did believe in the resurrection of the dead. Because that was a Sadducee's belief. That you there was no resurrection. Many Pharisees agreed with King Messiah Yeshua. This is why Messiah is found using them as a benchmark for holiness. What does Messiah Yeshua say in Matthew 5.20? For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So he's using them as a benchmark for holiness. He's using them for a benchmark to attain holiness. In a public hearing before the Sanhedrin, which by Rav Shaul's time had become divided. Rav Shaul is the Apostle Paul. In a public hearing, the office of the Sanhedrin at the time of Shaul was divided. You had one half Sadducees, you had one half Pharisees. And they misbehaved sometimes. They didn't agree. And so what does Paul do? 
He stands up there and he says, I am standing trial on my belief of the resurrection of the dead. And what happens in the Sanhedrin? All the Pharisees stand up and they go, yeah. And they, and they say, we agree. And then the Sadducees go, no. And there's a big argument erupts. Then Shaul, knowing that some of them were Sadducees and others Pharisees, called out in the Sanhedrin, my brothers, I am a Pharisee. Descendant from Pharisees, I stand on trial because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. Acts 23 and 6. Do you think of Shaul when you think of a Pharisee? Because he was one. In fact, I think, you go back a few slides, I might have missed that. Yeah, you did. This declaration sees a dispute erupt between them with the Pharisees taking Shaul's side. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. How do we miss this? We simplified things, didn't we? And we simplified things too much. And we missed this precious detail in the scriptures, didn't we? Is this mic too loud? Is there anybody complaining this is too loud? No comments yet. No, not about that. Well, uh... <coughs> huh? According to the Gospel of Mark, Jesus' crucifixion was authorized by the Roman authorities at the instance of the leading Jew Judeans, the Jews, from the Sanhedrin, according to Mark 15, 1 and uh, 15. Ultimately, Pilate sees nothing worth killing Yeshua for. So in an attempt to please his accusers, he beats the stuffing out of him until he is a walking mass of blood and sinew. This plan fails as his death is called for even more vehemently by the Jews. This was called Jewish deicide, the execution of a god by a certain race of people. Jewish deicide is a long-held belief of many early Christians that places the responsibility of the death of Jesus on the Jewish people as a whole. This is expressed in the ethno-religious slur, Christ killer. Used as a rallying cry of mobs over many centuries of pogroms, other violent attacks on Jewish communities around Europe, as well as other measures against Jews. But Paul uh, H. Jones writes, Although Mark depicts all the leading Jewish groups united in their opposition to Jesus, his passion narratives are not overtly anti-Jewish since they are interpreted as falling within the range of acceptable intra-Jewish disputes. To some readers, the cleansing of the temple framed by the withered fig tree confirms God's judgment against the Jews in their temple. Most likely, however, the story explains for this small sect of Jesus followers that survived the Roman Jewish war, why God committed destruction of the temple. It is an in-house interpretation and therefore not anti-Jewish. We've been looking at it from outside the camp. Like the parables of the vineyard, by which traditional allegorical interpretations cast the tenants as the Jews, the murdered heir as Jesus and the owner as God must be set within the context of intra of an intra-Jewish dispute, end of quote. As Matthew's narrative marches towards the passion, anti-Jewish rhetoric appears to increase in chapter 21. The parable of the vineyard is followed by the great stone text from Psalm 118, 22 and 23 that says, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Matthew 21 and 40, 42. Then in chapter 23 and 24, three successive hosti hostilities are recorded. First, a series of woes are pronounced against the Pharisees. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You shut up the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Matthew 23 and 13. And then further in Matthew 23, 31 and 33, you testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how can you escape being sentenced to Gehenna or to hell? Whoa. Why is Yeshua so hard on the Pharisees? 
In comparison, the Sadducees are way more screwed up, not even believing in the resurrection of the dead, and yet Yeshua rarely castigates them. Why? The answer, I believe, is found in Luke 12, 48. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with, a, with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Uh, I see. So, who were the ones that were meant to be in charge? The priests or the Pharisees? The Pharisees. The buck stops with them. Did they get soft? Did they let the Sadducees kind of get the upper hand? You have to look into history to find that out. But the ones that he is rebuking the hardest are the ones that have the concern of the Almighty. And they've been given gifts. They have spiritual gifts. They were smart. Did you know they could recite the entire Torah off the top of their head? And if you gave one an ink and a parchment, they could write the Torah out from memory and get every word right. They, were, they weren't people who were poor in spirit, ladies and gentlemen. They weren't like us. These guys were big. They were like in Solomon's ballpark almost. But they allowed themselves to become corrupted, just like Solomon did. Many of the living Sadducees weren't even Jews. They were Edomites, Jordanians, holding office based purely on financial standing. They didn't have the right to have their appointed officers. They shouldn't have even been there. Why do I? Why should I be talking to somebody who shouldn't even be there? Why should I even waste my breath? The ones that I want to say this to are the ones that need to be there and need to get it right. I'm not telling you this for you to go, oh, I'm going home, I'm not playing anymore. This is being told to them to go, what should we do? Like the soldiers did when they came to see John the Immerser. What should we do? Don't extort. Be happy with your pay. Don't take advantage of people. Not to go, oh, you got angry at me. Oh, let's kill him. That's not, he's not trying to provoke them to come and kill him. 